Hey guys, it's May May, and these little critters have taken over my YouTube channel this week in a good way. So if you were here on Tuesday, you would have seen us make this little puppy dog together. He was the first one that we made. This is a treat holder, any kind of treat you want to put inside of him. I just have a little Hershey bar, and this is also a treat holder in unicorn form with another little treat inside. Now, Thursday, we made this one on our live video, super fun to make, and on that same video, you guys agreed that it'd be fun to see three to five more in today's video. So you're gonna see that. But before I do them, I thought it would be important if I kind of gave you my criteria for what, I, what I'm doing. Because if you're a member of our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I, you will have seen some incredible versions of this. And if you're not a member, you need to go join and see them because those crafters are knocking it out of the park, okay? There are cows and pigs and you name it over there. Here's my criteria so you'll know why I'm doing the ones I'm doing. Number one, I want these to be doable by everybody. So even though I have every kind of fancy equipment you can imagine from crickets to brother scanning cuts to dies to scissors to punches, to even though I have all that fancy stuff, I'm trying to keep them simple enough that if you needed to make these, you could just pick up some simple tools and get it done. Okay, you wouldn't need any fancy machinery or SVG files or PDFs or anything like that. Secondly, they have to say what the creature is to me, simply, right? I have to just kind of look at it and know that's what the little, what the critter is, all right? And then thirdly, they have to be something that I feel like can be duplicated. If I'm doing something that you can't duplicate, for example, could I draw the faces on? Absolutely, that would be not a big deal, and you might could too, but not everyone is comfortable in their drawing skills, so I'm using tools to make it happen for their faces without too much drawing, okay? So that's kind of the criteria. So today, we're going to make, I think, four. I've been working. We're going to see if they all work out or not, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you about the base that makes all of these critters. Now, if you have seen my other videos, you already know how this base works, so you can skip through this part, but I'm going to show you just in case you have it. This piece is a four and a quarter by five and a half tall piece of cardstock, okay? I'm putting this into my um, trimmer, and I'm going to mark the two and one eighth inch spot at the top right here where my cut line is. This is just giving me a reference mark, okay? I'm gonna pull this aside for a second, score it and fold it. Put this into my scoring board here. I gotta find my embossing tool, I hit it for myself, here it is. And we're gonna score this in half at two and three fourths. Now, if it doesn't bother you and you don't have a scoreboard, just fold this guy in half. It will be no big deal. So fold it in half and crease it down. But before I do that, I'm gonna do this part. Here's how we get the point for these little critters, okay? I take the score mark that I made and the pencil mark that I made and I put them on my cut line, all right? I then take my blade and I sink it into the cardstock and I push one direction and pull the other and that way I get a nice crisp point, okay? I'm gonna flip it over now using my score mark and the point that I just created there. Sink my blade, push up and pull down. I talk about that in detail in Thursday's video. You can go back and watch that if you want to get more detail about it. But this now is the base for our mouse. That's what we're going to do first. So you can see here how the puppy has the point. We're going to do a mouse. The mouse came about as an accident because I was trying to make a cat, but it turned into a mouse. So here we go. First things first, let's make ears. So what I did to make ears was I went into my stash and I had some stackable heart dies. We carry these on our store. There'll be links for supplies in our blog post. But these guys right here stack or nest, I should say. See how they fit inside of each other? So that's what I did. I cut two gray and two pink, and those are the ears for our little mouse. So, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do on these guys is I'm going to do some white stitching all the way around. Now, you don't have to do this part, but what I have found is that the stitching just kind of gives it some more texture and just some more cutesy, but I'll tell you this, I'm not stressing over my stitches. I'm not taking my time. I'm just getting them done, and what I found is by the time you're done, a missed stitch or a crooked stitch here or there is not the end of the world. And if you're making a bunch of these, I think it's best to have fun than to stress that each little stitch is in the right spot. So I'm just running around and stitching the edges. Now I'm gonna do this to the um, gray outer heart. And I'm also gonna do this to the pink inner heart because I think it's cute. I have found with any little critters you're making, stitches just make them more whimsical. If you're not looking for whimsy, 
then stitches may not be your thing, but it just seems to give them texture and just kind of fun them up, if that makes sense. All right, so we'll move those aside. And then I wanna um, white stitch this as well, but I am corner rounding all of these guys. And I found that if I white stitch now, I go all the way out to that edge and it's wasted. So if I go ahead and corner round these, and I'm using the half inch uh, corner rounder, and I'm doing all four sides, then I don't waste any stitches here. You'll see what I mean. See how it kind of cut some of that edge off? Now I can just stitch exactly what's going to be seen, and I'm not wasting anything. One tip that I just didn't do, if you're going to put your pen down, your white pen, for any length of time, put your cap back on, because the, um, the white gel on the ends can dry and get a little crusty. It doesn't stop it from working or anything. You just have to clean that little tip off. But if you're going to do like I did and, you know, go on to something else, just go ahead and put the cap back on. Save you some heartache later. Now, this little mouse face came out by accident. I was trying to make a cat. <laughs> and the face kept going mouse. So let me show you how to make your mouse. We're going to use a couple little stamps. Nothing major here, just some simple stamps. So this is one of the hearts from the Trixie's Valentine set. And when you, if you have that set, you'll notice that those hearts are in a cluster of three. I cut this little heart away. Don't worry, you can do that. You can cut your little photopolymer stamps and then use them as individual stamps and put them right back together on your block if you want them to be back to a cluster. So I'm taking that heart and I'm doing it upside down and just stamping it about that's about an inch and a quarter above the point. The reason is, remember, when we finish these guys, let me pull one back over, we're gonna put a little strip right here to hold the point down, so you don't want your face to be too low, okay? So a little high for his face. Then, from the Happy Tree stamp set, I'm using the simple little smile line right underneath the nose, about a half an inch underneath the nose, okay? And for eyes, I'm using what is actually a little eyebrow set from the Happy Tree um, stamp, but I'm doing it upside down to make it look like little closed eyes on our little mouse, like he's kind of a sleepy mouse. Now he's not quite mouse yet. We're gonna add another thing. So what I'm gonna do is from the point of the heart, I'm gonna draw a straight line that curves just slightly to the, the mouth, okay? So let's do it again, straight line and then curve away to make like a little open mouth. Then I'm gonna make three dots here that are whisker dots, one, two, and three. And then I found that little short whiskers look really cute on a mouse. So just something like that, just give him some whiskers. And now let's assemble his ears. So for the ears, all you have to do is glue your little pink hearts to these um, bigger hearts. And if you wanna use foam, that you know you can use foam dimensional between it. I don't really think you have to. I'm just gonna glue these little pink hearts kind of low on the ears. And yes, we're gonna use the hearts upside down. That's what's making the ears, right? So move this down here kind of low to the little point in the middle. Now, when I assembled my mouse, I discovered that the movement of the ears kind of changes his personality. So if you want to bring his ears down low, it kind of makes him look he's, like he's kind of a crouching, low down little mouse on the ground, like maybe he's ready to pounce. But if you come up kind of high, you get kind of like he's paying attention and listening. And I kind of like this look. So I'm going to glue his little ears kind of up high at the top. But I found that with all of the little creatures, if you'll assemble the little pieces and parts before you put them together, you kind of can change their personality by where you place them. And that's super fun. All right, glue this little ear down. And then we're gonna do some more white. I love to add white accents to their little faces, okay? So first, I'm gonna come right here and make like a little stitch line and a dot. And then, if you want to, you can color his little mouth in white. Let me do it so you can see it. If you want it to feel kind of open, you can put a little white in there, or you can put a little pink, either way. And I'm going to give him some little eyelashes. So I'm just going to come out from his little eye and just touch and drag. Anything you want to do to add personality, it's easy, it's fun, and they end up looking adorable. All right, so this guy is now ready to close down. And I'm gonna just press and close that. And it's ready for its little banner piece. So for the banners, I just went ahead and cut five of these. These are three fourths inches tall by three and a half long. I did ribbon banners by hand and I added foam squares on the ends. The reason for the foam squares, I discovered after making my puppy dog that the little banner being flat on 
the critter makes it hard to get the point in and out of. And having this little bit of foam dimension on the end kind of lifts it up and allows you to get the little point in and out easier. All right, then I'm just gonna kind of eyeball center this on the bottom. And that holds the little uh, chin of our mouse down. And now we need to put a little chocolate in there. Let me find some chocolate to put in. You, and the cool thing is you can decide if you what candy or whatever you put inside. And if you want it to be mouse themed, that would be cute too. I'm gonna slide this little cookies and cream in here. What if you gave cheese and put it in the mouse? That would be funny, like a little block of cheese. That would be funny. Oh, or string cheese. If your school says no candy, maybe they'll let you do string cheese. That might be super cute inside the little mouse. So that is a mouse. Now you may see a different animal and that's perfectly fine. One thing I wanna tell you is this cardstock I used seems to be coming off a little craft colored on screen, but it's actually gray in person. So maybe make sure your colors, you know, match the animal you're doing. But I think this little guy's cute. And if that was string cheese, oh my goodness, that'd be adorable. Okay, now we're moving on to a very requested animal and it is a froggy frog. You guys wanted a frog. So many of you said a frog would be cute. So we're gonna do it. So for the frog, it is super simple. I've made the base just like I did for the mouse. I have cut a three inch oval. This is an oval die that I just have in my stash. I do think we have these on the store. I'm not 100% sure, but I think we do. So that's a three inch oval. This is two one inch green punches. This is just a circle punch I used, okay? These guys are either half inch or five eighths. I can't remember for sure on this, but they're just two white circles to sit inside of the inch. And then these little guys that you probably can't see are two little black circles that are done with this little punch right here. And I think that's about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. Okay, first things first, we got to stitch line this guy. And I'm only going to stitch line the green portion of the eyes and the white part of his mouth. So I'm going to stitch around here. I think this will be cute because we're putting green on top of green for this little guy, and I really want his face to be a feature. And you know, this oval is kind of his face. So I was thinking if I go ahead and stitch line it, it'll pop out and really show the shape of the frog. So I'm gonna stitch this in the two green eyes and we'll be right back together. Okay, now if you have seen me make a frog before, which I have made on my channel, there is a little frog um, treat box from last year. Here's what I did. I took the oval die that I used to cut the little face with, and I'm gonna line it up kind of one third of the way from the bottom here. And I'm gonna take, I don't wanna use this, I'm gonna use my thicker pen. This is the, um, these Illustrated Faith are so cool. This is the 0.65. They come in a two pack. That's the 0.25, so you get two different nibs. I find myself using them a lot. I'm gonna lay this little die down just somewhere along the bottom section of the face, and I'm gonna draw a line using that as my trace, okay? So just like that, I'm just tracing that shape. Frogs are easy, because they're simple little faces, right? Then right above his little line, I'm gonna put two little dots for his nostrils, also super easy. And here's a little bit of trivia for you. When I was in art class in high school, the first animal or first thing I learned to draw was a frog because we, we were learning how to draw um, creatures with shapes, which is fun because that's basically what punch art is. And so the frog was the first one I did. Okay, so this is how we're gonna build his eyes. The green base, the white circle on top of that, and then the two little black pupils on top of that. And you can make his eyes look in any direction you want. That's totally up to you. And I'm gonna put this one down right here. And I think I'm just gonna let him be kind of, I don't know, straight on looking, I don't know. And oh, need a little more than that, didn't quite get it. And then this little dude right here. All right, and then we're gonna put these eyeballs on the top of his little oval and you will have a frog. Super easy, right? You can use this frog on anything. We're gonna put him on that little treat holder. Now this guy is gonna go on here. You notice that I did not stitch this. Like I said, I'm not gonna stitch the background here, but I am gonna corner around the edges. I just think these look better, softer, with the um, corners rounded like this. So corner rounding the edges, and then this guy, it's glued right here. The only thing you need to be careful of is when you glue your face on, make sure you're leaving yourself enough room for this guy to clear the face, okay? So a little bit higher at the top, we need to glue him. 
All right, so something like these. Oh, I thought I missed it, but I got pretty close. All right, so there is our little frog, and we can take this little guy, just like we've done on all the others, and close him up for a treat. Now, what would you put inside a frog treat? I don't know. Oh, maybe a bag of raisins, because they kind of look like, um, they kind of look like flies. You could just kind of bag some in like a little, um, like those pretzel bags, those clear bags that you put pretzels in. Wouldn't that be cute to fill it with raisins? Did I say they look like frogs? Raisins kind of look like flies. That would be cute in there, wouldn't it? I think that's adorable. Now, let me show you something. This is the one I did earlier, and I cut a little red triangle piece just from a snip of paper and made a tongue. So, depending on what you like, I wanted to show you too. You could have a little tongue sticking out or just do this. Aren't they adorable? So cute. Little frog. Okay, what's next? What's next? Let's do another well-requested animal, and it is the fox. Okay, so for the fox, here's what we're going to be using. I want to show you all the pieces real quick. You're going to need, and I've already done one of these. I didn't think about it. I started doing it off camera. You're going to need two orange hearts, two white hearts, just like we did for the mouse. You're going to need two, and I did these with what punch? Oh, this one. You're going to need two half-inch black circles, and then this one is that same punch that's about three-eighths to a quarter of an inch. I did another one there. And you're gonna need a heart. Now, I did this with a punch that I have just because I didn't wanna have to die cut it because I had the punch out. But you could do this with the same nesting die uh, hearts that you're doing here. I just used my punch and that is a two and a half inch heart. All right, let's stitch these guys since we're at it. Let's go ahead and I'm using the thicker pen um, to stitch these little guys. So this is the same as we did while ago. Just stitch around your little hearts. All right, assembling the ear is just like we did for the mouse. Take a little art glitter glue or glue of your choice. Put some on the little white heart, a little low on the bottom. Again, you can use foam if you want to here. Whatever you want to do if you want to have a little dimension. Ears are ready. Let's move those out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and move the little black dot to the way too and bring the heart over. Now, for the heart, this is what I did. I cut it in half from the point to point, Okay. In doing that, it leaves you a little messy little point here, and that's okay. We kind of want to get rid of that anyway. So I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm just going to slightly trim that away. Just whatever's left in the middle. It's just a sliver that comes off. It's no big deal. So I'm just kind of making sure that's nice and round again after I cut it. That's it, okay? Now, for the fox, this is what's going to make it look like a fox. Here's our little piece that is his base. I did it in orange. I'm gonna take these two pieces from the heart and close to the bottom here, I'm going to kind of separate them from each other and they're gonna hang off the edges and that's fine. But I want that little bit of separation here because you know that's what makes kind of the, the quintessential fox face. He kind of has that little um, stripe down the front. So these guys will get glued right here, okay? So let me glue those down real quick. So just a little art glitter glue. I'm avoiding that rounded edge because that kind of hangs off. So I just put my glue to the inside here. So there's one. And you can make that separation as big as you want or as little as you want. That's totally up to you. And then this is two. I just like that separation. I think it really makes it feel like a fox and we haven't even done much, you know. All right. Then what we're going to do is take these eyes. And the eyes are the bigger of the circles that you cut. And I'm going to put a little glue here and just place them in this area, in that little uh, curve of the heart. It's perfect for them, just like so. And I wasn't sure if I was going to stitch the face. So what I'm going to do is wait until I put the ears on and see if I want to stitch this whole face. And I might, you know, the little white section. But here's what I really do want to make sure I do. I'm going to go ahead and close this and crease it down. Now my little uh, banner that's going to hold this down is going to go like this, okay? So I want the nose to land right above that. I think that's what will help it to really be like a fox, to have that nose right above where this is. So I wanted to do a little measure real quick so I could see where this is going to go. So I'll put a little dot here, and then this little guy goes right where those guys come together. If you need to make a pencil mark to make sure you get it in the right spot, that'll be fine but that's gonna work for me. And then we need the ears. Now you have some options on the ears. You can put the, the ears to the front and I think kind of going straight up is really cute. 
or you can glue them to the back so that they come behind. And I think for the fox, going from behind is really cute. So I'm gonna put my glue on the front of my little ears and then put them to the back of the page. I just think that really makes it look foxy. That's cute, foxy. All right, so there is one and let's do the other one. This one was so easy to do. I had fun with this one. And I wanna give you a tip, and I think I told you this in the Thursday video. When you get ready to make whatever creature you need to make, go out online or Pinterest or Google or whatever and look up punch art animals. Whatever animal you're looking to create, look for it in punch, punch art form and then look in your stash for what things you have that are that shape that it takes to create them and just go to town. If you don't have heart dies, but you have a heart punch, use it. You know, I think looking for the punch art pieces is really the way to go because it helps you to find what pieces you need to put together to get the creature you're looking for, or the critter, I should say. The stitching is adorable. You have to have that there. See how it just changes things to do the stitching? And it doesn't take long, and I'm not even I'm not being picky. I'm just doing some stitch lines. No recipient is going to look at this and go, hmm, this would have been really cute if you'd have paid attention to your stitch lines. <laughs> and if they do, don't make them one next time. You just keep it for yourself. <laughs> All right, white, white pin back to his little eyes because this is going to make him pop. So I'm going to do a little stitch line and a dot and a stitch line and a dot. Look how cute Mr. Fox he is. All right, you could um, um, do stitch line on his little orange face too. I'm not going to, I don't think it needs it. And then we're gonna put his little holder down. This guy's adorable. He might be my favorite so far. I think he's pretty-ish. Okay, so get that little guy out of the way. Go away, okay. Now we're gonna center this at the bottom to hold him down. He kind of looks like he's peeking over the top of the Will You Be Mine. Oh, he's precious. Let's get some chocolate to put in him. I think I'm gonna put the chocolate bar in him. So here's chocolate. I'm gonna slide this one in like so. What would you put inside the fox's face? What kind of treats? There's all, I mean, you could do anything for the fox, right? Because fo don't aren't foxes kind of like little stealers? Oh, I didn't even round the edges of him and he's still precious. I don't think I'm gonna round his edges. I just noticed when I looked in the camera, so I'm not rounding his edges and I think he looks adorable. But it's raccoons that steal things, isn't it? Are, well, there's, foxes are sly, right? So any treat can go inside a fox. All right, we have one more. So we're gonna get four in today. Now this one has been the hardest one I've done so far and you would think it would have been the easiest, but it's not. We're making a cat and it took me all day and I've got the best I can do. And if you don't think it looks like a cat, then I'm gonna challenge you to do your best to make a cat, okay? <laughs> because he has been a little difficult to do or she, whichever one it is. Now, what I'm using here is two of the black hearts, two white hearts, that's ears, okay? Then for his nose, I decided to do this little triangular pink shape of paper. And I literally just took the edge of a piece of paper and went snip and made a little triangle. For whiskers, I trimmed two pieces of cardstock that are right about two inches long, as skinny as my trimmer would let me to get a good trim, right? So these are just two little tiny trimmed pieces of paper, or cardstock rather, and we're gonna try to turn this into a cat. All right, so what do you think happens first? Stitching. So I'm gonna stitch his ears and also his um, face. On this one, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch everything. All right, let's do this. Let's assemble ears. And also for the cat, I felt like I needed to do his assemble his face after I had him kind of laid out where I could look at him. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna put glue on his ears. So here's one. I didn't, I obviously didn't stitch the little white hearts. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna leave them in the middle. We'll put the glue onto the piece instead of fighting it. Okay. So that's ears. Aren't they cute? Adorable. For this little guy, I've decided I wanna pop him up on a piece of foam. I'm just gonna grab a piece here and let's see how I want to do that. You'll have to use kind of a small piece or trim one down. I'm gonna do this and then trim off what hangs off the edge. Some of this can be tiny work, but now listen, if you have a cutting machine, remember in the beginning I told you I'm not using my machine because I don't want anyone to feel like they can't recreate these projects, but if you're using a cutting machine, you could cut these out with your like Cricut or your uh, brother Scan and Cut or whatever you use so quick. So don't forget to use those machines and make these projects go super fast. Okay, ears like this. 
nose like this. I'm not gonna stick his nose down yet because I wanna stamp his eyes. So here's what I'm gonna do for, <laughs> that stuck to me. What I'm gonna do for eyes is I'm gonna stamp them in white ink. So for his eyes, I'm using the same eyes that I use for everything else, the little eyebrows upside down so they'll look kind of closed. I stuck my finger on my ink pad. Look at that, so <laughs> I'm holding it up. All right, so I've got these little eyes. I'm gonna come right up here, hope my head didn't get in the way, and just stamp those down. So now I have little eyes. Now I can stick his nose into place because I know where his eyes are. And so that little nose is gonna go something like this. And you can play with this face. I struggled, I'm not kidding. The cat was the hardest for me. All right, for these little guys that I cut, I'm gonna fold them in half and just have a two whisker. If you want three whiskers, you could do that. But my plan is to put a little glue on this end that will hold them folded and I'm gonna stick them kind of under his nose. I felt like that really helped him to look more cat-like, to have them coming out from behind his nose. And I'm gonna tell you, I worked on this dude. So if you go, Mei Mei, that doesn't like a cat. I hear you. I worked hard to get this one. I really thought the cat would be so easy. The easiest one I've done so far, I think is the frog. So if you're looking for the easiest one, maybe go with the frog. I smeared a little glue, but that'll dry. It'll be fine. So I'm just gonna let that sit there and dry. And I can go ahead and glue his ears into place. Again, let me show you something. With the cat ears, you can put them behind his face. So here's his face. If you want them to go behind like this, like we did the fox, you can do that. I like the little heart showing, so I'm gonna do it up here like this, just like we did on the other ones. And because all of the other little creatures have them, I'm gonna come right here and do little white eyelashes on this little girl or boy, whatever your kitty cat is. I just think they're cute. And notice I did these eyes facing up. I thought the point looked more cat-like, you know, the little point of the eyes. So there's that. All right, let's bring this down. Let's close it. And we will glue down one of our, we'll stick down one of our little banners. Okay, so here's our kitty cat. Let's put our little strip down here to hold it down. Something like that. And let's put some candy in there. I think I'm gonna use the, the white chocolate one again, or the um, cookies and cream. But goodness, this is a cat. What do cats like? It'd be funny to put maybe a pack of Swedish fish in there, like little fish, like tuna fish or something like that. Not tuna fish, but Swedish fish as if it were tuna fish. Okay, I'm going too far. I've been doing this too long. All right, there's a cat. So there you go, guys. Six different so far little treat ideas. And I really think you could run with this, with this idea and go crazy doing whatever you wanna do. And I love to see what you guys are making. So if you're making any of these guys or any project that I've inspired you to make, I wanna see it. We have a Facebook group that's called May May Made It and so did I, where you can share the projects that I've inspired you to make. I love to see them. And you can also share them over on our, our uh, website, which is maymaymadeit.com. Hover over more and you'll see our gallery pop up and you can add your uh, creations to our gallery. I hope you have enjoyed this. I think this may be the end of this series for me because I have given you six options, which I think will work and we can move on to some other fun stuff that I have for you. But there you go, little Valentine treats. I hope you have enjoyed this one. I certainly have. And I hope that you've gotten something that you can use for your treats for this year. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate the challenge from everyone. Um, you guys really challenged me with a lot of animals that I couldn't even begin to do, like a sloth and a narwhal. Those are actual challenges, but I thought that's super cool, but I don't think I could make this look like a sloth or a narwhal. If you can do it and share it on one of our groups. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.